Welcome to uh, Church for the City. Uh, we're going to just pray here just one second, but I do, uh, obviously, the uh, world events, Russia and Ukraine, I'm sure most of you have been praying for that, but in case you didn't know, we do have a family connection to the Ukraine. Jed and, and uh, Kim Johnson do a wonderful ministry, really next to the capital of Ukraine. And they do a, a tremendous ministry to uh, some really some needy uh, kids there, and they live there. Well, that's uh, Pastor Dave and Cindy Johnson's son and daughter-in-law. And so if you haven't been praying for them, I just want to encourage you throughout the week, just continue to pray for them, lift them up specifically. If you have more questions, you can certainly see Pastor Dave and Cindy and ask them more about what Jed and Kim do there. But we're just going to continue to pray for that situation, but specifically for Jed and Kim and their clan. Amen. So let's go ahead and stand. We're going to pray a prayer together. We're going to do this in unity with one heart. We're just going to lift up the Lord. We're going to pray this together with energy. Amen. Oh, God in heaven, we are your people. We come to you with one voice and one heart in adoration. You are worthy of all our praise. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you that you have given us ears to hear your voice. We are your people. We are listening. Speak to us this day as we follow your direction. Amen. Let's worship the Lord.
strangers neighbors our blood is one children of generations of every nation of kingdom come don't let your heart be troubled hold your head up high don't fear no evil fix your eyes on this one true god is madly in love with you take courage hold on be strong remember where i
If you're looking for freedom, his name is Jesus. If you're looking for salvation, his name is Jesus. Oh, I have the present help in times of trouble, his name is Jesus. Oh, his name is Jesus. is in his blood jesus light of heaven friend forever his kingdom come oh thank you lord you have made a way and here and now this isn't outside of your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
praise, believing that you are who you say you are, waiting for the light to hit the darkness. God, we are going to thank you that it's coming, that it's already happening, even when... So let it be done. If you say that you are Waymaker, we agree. If you say that you are the light in the darkness, we agree. God, we just, we just want to see you move. We just want to know who you are. God, right here and right now, as we sing this, I pray, God, that you stir a faith that goes straight to the unbelief, Lord, in us, that is that withholding, that hesitation, but God, would you, would you bring the light to that place? Would you make it, would you make it more faith instead of our doubt, God? Would you help us believe you are who you say you are? Let's sing Waymaker. That is who you are, God. God, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord spoke to my heart this morning on three things. Presence, working, 
and they ask. First thing, presence. God's presence is here. I don't know if you can feel that, you can sense that. Jesus said that wherever the two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. While God promises that he's gonna live within us, he does live within us. God's very presence dwells within us. There's a unique thing where we are gathered together and it's in context of prayer and worship that there's a unique presence. God is present to answer. It was so important to Moses that Moses said, don't send us up into the promised land unless you go. Because God had said, first of all, he says, I'm going to destroy these people because they I gave them the commands. I gave them the covenant. And they built up an, a, a gold calf and immediately broke two of them. He says, I'm going to destroy them, get out of the way, and I'm going to make your family great, Moses. And Moses interceded. He says, no, don't do that, Lord. God relented. He says, okay but I'm gonna send my angel with you. And Moses again interceded and says, no, God, if I found favor in your sight, if you, you know my name, I talk to you face to face, don't send us up if you don't go with me. And, and finally he says, I will go with you. My presence will go with you. And God's presence went with them. Second thing is that working, that is, we just sung about that. God is always working. I, I only know one place in the Bible where God rested. The end of creation, seventh day, says God rested. And it was a type that we need to rest, and we need to rest in God. But other than that, in Matthew, or I'm sorry, in John 5, he, Jesus says, The Father is working until now, and I am working. And when he says, I am working, that's an emphatic I, Jesus, am working. He's always working. And he's working here today, working in the hearts of people. Thirdly, ask. Matthew 7 says that ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. An interesting thing is that Greek language a verb covers a lot of things. And the ask, seek, and knock in the Greek have two important concepts right there. One is that it's continual. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. But I, this morning or this, this week, it just hit me as I read it again that it's an imperative. That's a command. Jesus is saying, you ask, you seek, you knock, keep doing it. I want you to do it. This morning, we're going to ask and we're going to seek and we're not going to knock. God's presence is here. God is working in this place. He's always working. And thirdly, he's commanding us to ask, seek, and knock. We're, our, con, our focus this year is going to be on prayer. And I believe God is calling us right now. There's an intercessory word right here right now that I feel like God is wanting us to intercede. So right now, I'm going to ask you to take a moment. And God's going to put something on your heart, somebody on your heart, somebody in need, somebody that's away from God, walked away from God, or has never known God. Some of your family, there's trouble. Maybe in your own life, there's trouble. God's presence is here. God is always working, and he's asking, he's telling you, seek, ask, and knock. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right now. And we're going to ask. We're going to seek and we're going to knock for that thing that God has put on your heart. And I'm going to ask you to do it out loud. Let's go. God, we ask. We seek. We knock. Right now, God. God, I pray, first of all, I lift up for the Ukraine, God, and for that part of the world. God, that you would move in that place. God, it is not a surprise to you. And God, you are moving in that place even as the turmoil goes on. Lord, we ask that you would, Lord, cover those people. Lord, for Jed, Kim, and the family, any of our families that are there, God, we intercede right now and say, God, protect them. God, your angels be there around them. Circle them with your presence. Circle them with your power. Protection upon them in Jesus' name. God, for those that are gone away from you and walked away or don't know you, God, I ask right now, Father, that you begin drawing. Lord, you are God that draws and power draws people. God, begin to draw these people to you, Lord. We're seeing and we're asking, we're knocking, Lord, and we're saying, Lord, work. 
Work your miracle. Work your way. God, work your light in these people in Jesus' name. God, we lift them up to you. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. And now we praise you for that. God, you are wonderful. You are, Lord, you are the miracle worker, the way maker. And we praise you for your mighty work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Give God some claps here. Let's take a moment and watch this video on some announcements. for the city today is february 27th and here are this week's announcements tomorrow is uptown uptown is our young adults ministry for ages 18 to 26 ish meet together for connection at 10 22 nutter 6 p.m tomorrow church we want to invite you to attend advanced conference at hope church in kalispell montana march 17th and 18th Advance is a relational network of churches that is founded on the premise that we can go farther together, and we want you to be a part. You can learn more about the Advance Network at advancewithus.net or sign up to attend the conference on the Church Center app. No matter what you do and no matter how you do it, we want you to be a part of everything going on here at Church for the City. So check out our social media, grab a hard copy of events in the lobby, sign up for our monthly emails, or follow us on the Church Center app. Thank you, Leah. Let's all stand, take a moment. We're going to take actually three minutes. Greet one another, get a cup of coffee. We'll come back here for the word. And this is Mid-City Week, so if you have kids or you are young people, grades five through eight, Make your way to the back for Josh and Hannah Monson. Amen.
All right, well, yeah, that was, I guess you're waiting for me to speak, I guess, or something. <laughs> well, good morning. Um, it's so good seeing you guys here. Thank you so much for being a part of Church for the City. I had uh, a request this week from our very own Tim Leader, and some of you have been praying for Tim over the last week. He had a pretty major health uh, scare and issue last week, and he just asked uh, if we would let him just share a testimony with God is doing. And so I'm going to invite Tim up right here right now. I want you to welcome him as he comes, as he shares uh, what God did in his life and his heart. Thank you all. I want to say this is not about me. This is about giving God the glory because truly without him, I would not be here in front of you speaking. Last Sunday morning, I had a heart attack in the wee hours of the morning down in Thermopolis, Wyoming, and my wife performed CPR, called 911. The AEDs were on board with the two officers that came as first responders to zap me back to life. We were 100 yards from the hospital, took an ambulance ride from the, host from the motel room to the hospital, air flighted to Billings, and it, and it just boggles my mind that in every aspect of it, God had his hand in it. I, I, it couldn't have gone, I, I equate it to being like an orchestra and, and God is a conductor or a movie and he's the director. And it's just, even today's worship, the references to the heart and the miracle worker. And I, I told Kalen before the service, I said, I can't get my head around it. And he probably had the best advice. He said, it'll probably take a lifetime. And hopefully, with God's grace, this lifetime's a little longer. Thank you all for your prayers. You know, uh, God will do whatever it takes to get our attention. There's always a deeper work that God wants to do in our heart and our life. And if it means a heart attack, I welcome it. See, Jesus, whatever it takes to get us to a place where we just love you and know you and share you and connect with you and follow you because he loves us. And so you just need to know that, that God is in pursuit. I love that idea. It's kind of like a heat-seeking missile. It's like you got a big old bullseye on your back, and God is after you. He pursues you. He's looking for you. I don't care how long you've been serving God. I don't care if it's been, you know, if you've been serving the Lord for years and years and years. Jesus is still after you. He still wants more of you. He still wants all of you. He wants every area of your heart and your life for him. And I, I tell you, the benefits far outweigh our desires for other things, right? But it just takes a while to live. But Tim, we love you. Tim and Christy, we prayed for you quite fervently last weekend. It's obviously that God was in that. I mean, just from Christy waking up at the right time to having those AEDs on board of a police, who, who has those? Really, it's probably a rare thing, but they got, Thermopolis, I understand, got a, a grant to have those in their cop cars, right? Just, just every, every aspect, every, and God just, he just knows. Matter of fact, the scripture says he's the one that preserves our lives. And so I'm just really thankful. We love you guys, and we're so glad that you shared that this morning. And, and just know that the Lord loves you, and he's in pursuit of you. And he just desires to have a relationship with you. And it's an ongoing thing. It's not a one-time deal. It's done and we move on. There is a continual drawing of the Lord in our hearts and our lives to him. Amen. That's why this, this, this journey, our spiritual journey is such a beautiful thing. Right? Is that we get to experience this overwhelming sense of God's depth of love for us. And it takes a lifetime to learn that. There's so much more. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul, I prayed, actually, I prayed for you guys this morning that we would have a depth of knowledge of God. 
that, that even this service, that there would be a depth of the knowledge of God. And oftentimes that just takes revelation. It takes understanding. It takes the Holy Spirit to show us. But when we get it, oh, the joy in our hearts when we connect. Amen? So we're just going to continue this morning with loving Jesus and letting him speak to us and minister to our hearts. Amen? <laughs> and last week, I really talked about the fact that God wants to build a house. Right? We talked about the word edify just means to build up. There's a, it's a biblical term. It talks about the importance of building up the body of Christ, building up the church. We, we, we referenced and talked about specifically the prophetic gifting or the gifts of the Spirit. We emphasize prophetic, but the gifts of the Spirit, and they're given for the purpose of encouraging, strengthening, and building up the church. And that when we have a word, when God uh, puts something on your heart, that he wants us to share that with one another because he wants to build up the church. It encourages our lives, amen? Honestly, just Tim sharing a testimony of what God did in his heart and in his life and how it's overwhelming. Does that not bring joy to your hearts? Does that not minister us and encourage us and encourage really builds our faith. And that's that idea. So that was the emphasis. I, I, and I, I would encourage, and it's kind of the way that we do it. I didn't really address this last week, but the way that we do it is we have a, a mic up front. If you feel like God has given you a word to share with the church, you would just come and talk to me about that. And then if I feel it's appropriate, you would come up and you would share that with the church. Generally happens right towards the end of worship or in worship in there. And so that's how we do it here. If you feel like maybe God has given you something for the body, you just come up and share that with me and we'll see what God does from there. Amen. But that, that was the intent. But, but I was thinking this week, I was thinking about that idea is kind of, uh, can be scary especially if you don't know how to public speaker or you don't want to, like even Tim says, it's not about, you know, having this long, drawn out. I mean, sometimes people are just maybe a little bit more shy or not totally confident in that. And I'm thinking, well, I was thinking, well, how does the Holy Spirit just speak to us on a day-to-day? -day? How do we learn to hear his voice? How does God minister to us and speak to us? And so that's what I'd like to address this morning. And, and I do want to say this. I, I cannot... Mark really addressed it this morning, but I cannot overemphasize the importance of developing your prayer life. I, I am, I'm just, I'm, I'm burdened and stirred by this idea that God is calling us to be men and women of prayer and that he, he wants us to connect with him in a relational, and the way, it's really that, that's it's dialogue, it's conversation, it's relationship with the Lord, prayer. And it has different aspects. I'm not gonna get in that today, but there's supplication and intercession and conversational, right? There's just that relationship piece. But, but pray and let the Lord stir your hearts to pray. Jesus said this to his disciples, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. And he's calling us to pray. We prayed for that last night at prayer last night. I just felt like God stir our spirits God, let us say no to our lazy flesh that doesn't want to do it and say yes to the spirit who's drawing us into it because God is up to wonderful things and he partners with you and he wants, you know, our prayers make a difference. Our prayers make a difference in the Ukraine. We may not even think it, but did you know God is sovereign over Russia? He's, he's in control. It seems like out of control for us. But the reality is he's in control and he's sovereign and he wants us to be praying. And so I say we pray, amen? I was thinking about this a number of years ago. I had the opportunity to go to Rome. I was in Rome for three days. We spent some time in Italy, Bernie and I, and my kids, Hannah and Josh, and, and we went to the Vatican. Uh, a pretty amazing place, you know, just the, just the ornate you know, Michelangelo, I mean, the whole thing, right? I mean, we, we see pictures of the fingers of God on the Sistine Chapel ceiling. You, you know, seeing a, a picture versus seeing the reality, being in that building and looking at the architecture and looking at the art and looking at the paintings and looking at the ornate and the everything about that. And just, it's, it's just overwhelming and there's a lot to take in and so Bernie and I made a decision. We went to the Vatican and we decided we think we need to hire a tour guide. You know, we, you can go through it, you can wander through it, but there's, there's, it's, it's like, where do you go? You know, I just felt like we would be better served if we hired somebody 
to walk us through the Vatican. And so we, I think it was 150 euros or something, and we hired a guy, and, and I'm telling you, I, I think it was worth it. He, his history, his explanation, uh, his descriptions of the art and how the Bible influenced Michelangelo and how, how he, he told the gospel story, and you can see it in the Sistine Chapel. The, the gospels basically preached with his paintings. And, and a little bit of history of the church, and the history of the Vatican, and history of the Catholic Church, and, and on and on and on, and where to go, and which halls to go down, right? He's the guide. He's leading us. He's guiding us through this place. I, I would have gotten lost. I wouldn't have known what to learn, or I wouldn't have known uh, of history, right? I wouldn't have known some of these wonderful uh, tidbits, if you will, uh, if we had not hired a guide. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's like going on a, a mountain hike, perhaps. If you're going to go into the wilderness, if it's unfamiliar territory, it'd probably be a good idea to have a guide that knows where to go and knows where the, the traps are and which, you know, which angles not to take, right? which turns not to take, right? et cetera. A guide. Guides are a good thing. How many people know that God thinks a guide is a good thing in our spiritual walk? Jesus says, I think a guide would be an important thing for you. And so Jesus is communicating to his disciples. He's really explaining to them that his life here on earth is coming to an end. He's going to be arrested. He's going to be, right, he's going to be beat. He's going to be crucified. He says, but I will not leave you orphans. He continues to talk to them about he's going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to bring conviction to the world and judgment. And he's going to deal with sin in the lives of people. And then he says this. I'm just going to pick this up. But this is in 1 John 16, verse 12. And it's up on the screen. You can follow along. But Jesus said this to his disciples. He says, I have much more to say to you. More than you can bear now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. Now listen to what he's saying. He says, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. He's going to be your guide. And he's going to speak to you. Which means we need to listen. Who's speaking to us? What kind of a relationship do we have with our Father in heaven? It's a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's called prayer. It's called listening that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. And he wants to speak to you the very words of Jesus. So Jesus communicates to the Holy Spirit what he wants to tell you. And that's what his job is. Verse 14, he will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. I mean, God's not into keeping secrets. Now, God's a mysterious God. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we don't get or understand. There's a lot of things he doesn't necessarily choose to show us. But he's into letting you know things. He's into this relationship. He's into dialogue. He's into communicating. He wants to speak to us. Verse 15, all that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. I, I, I want to start with just this idea of, I, I, think, I think what we do on Sundays is so important. I think when we call a fasting and prayer night in the midweek is so important. There is such value. There is such weightiness. There is such spiritual understanding and the call of God and connection with us spiritually and growth and all of those things. You listen to this. When we gather together waiting on the Lord, we can hear from the Holy Spirit. I believe he wants to speak to us. A gathering like this, the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us. When Mark gets up and he says, I feel like the Lord spoke this to me, and he says what? He said three things. His presence, the working, and hearing, right? Or asking, or the prayer piece. Well, even that connects with what I'm preaching on. And even, even, even the worship and the song, right? All of this together, there's something about coming together as the body of Christ and waiting upon the Lord, and he speaks to us. I don't want to miss what the Holy Spirit is speaking. There's something about waiting on the Lord together in corporate worship, 
corporate times of prayer. God speaks, he leads, he communicates to us as a body of believers. He gives us direction. He gives us strategy. He gives us encouragement and comfort and strength. All of those things when we come together in corporate worship and prayer. Can I hear an amen? amen. Listen to what it says in Acts 13 too. It says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, they were together Worshiping the Lord, in this case, they were fasting in prayer, right? The Holy Spirit said. They were together in prayer. The Holy Spirit said. How important is that? Who doesn't want to listen to that? Who doesn't want to hear from heaven what Jesus has to say? And then he gave them instructions. Set apart for me, Barnabas and Paul. I have a work for them to do. And he sends them off. Now, when I was about 21 and a half years old, it was in 1983, it was January or February, it was about eight months after I started serving the Lord, I was in a prayer meeting. Now, in those days, the church was really small, and there was two or three guys praying on a Saturday night. And I remember very distinctly, I was in the sanctuary at this little church in Great Falls, Montana, and I'm just, I remember just kneeling down, and it was, it's kind of calm. It's, it's like what we do today. It's last night, we were just worshiping or we'll sing, we'll pray out loud. Sometimes we pray silently or kneel or whatever. And I remember distinctly kneeling in this prayer time and there was a, another gentleman roaming throughout the sanctuary and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he gave me my call. He gave me the call that I would be a pastor. I was 21 and a half years old in a prayer meeting, worshiping and waiting upon God together with other brothers. It wasn't 10, 11, 12, 13 years later. I remember standing in a public meeting. It was a church meeting, not unlike this. Worship and prayer, and Bernie and I came up for prayer, and a guy came over to us, and he began to prophesy into our life. And he began to confirm the call of God. He began to confirm that God was sending us away to go do church work. As they were together in worship and prayer, the Holy Spirit said, God is calling us to hear his voice. Amen. And so I, I want to talk this morning about that in just three specific ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. But before we do that, I'd like to just, let's just take a moment Maybe ask him here to, to join us, amen. So Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here. Thank you that you dwell inside of us. God, thank you. I believe, Lord, that you're just calling us to a deeper level of prayer. And God, I pray that you would open up our ears and give us a greater sensitivity to your voice. Uh, Holy Spirit, that we would hear you in a clear, distinct way. God, individually and corporately, Lord, we love you. Thank you that you don't leave us orphans, but you do guide us. You guide us into truth, and you speak to us. So I pray that we have ears to hear, open up our hearts and our minds to receive, and help me to communicate well. Now I pray in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Well, the first thing is, is, this is very foundational, and the basis for our life, by the way, is we, he speaks through the word of God, the Bible. This is so crucial this is so important to the foundation of our life. It's the basis which we build our life on. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, if you will put into practice the words that I have given you. And this is at the end of Matthew's dissertation on the uh, Mount Olivet. He's the preaching on the Mount is what it's called. It's about four chapters long, five through seven, really. You can go read. Just, Jesus is just teaching. He's giving principles. He's talking about life and being salt and life and you know, all of these wonderful things. He says, is, if you will put into practice these words of mine, you will build your life on the rock. You, you will build your life, you will build foundationally on a foundation that cannot be shaken. Amen. The word of God. So, so we understand the foundational principles and the importance of reading the Bible. Now listen to what it says in Acts 4.25. Listen to this. And now, they're talking to God, and they said this, you spoke by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is speaking. So he's saying, God, you spoke 
by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. And then it quotes a passage out of Psalms. Psalms 2, actually. Why do the nations rage and peoples plot in vain? So right there is what he's saying is this, that the Holy Spirit speaks through Scripture. When we read Scripture, the Holy Spirit put that into place. He spoke it. And so we just know just from that that when we read the Bible, God is speaking to us. Now, I, I'm going to talk about just the general word of God. There's just principles in the word. There's God's general will, right? How to live, his commandments, the heart of God. Is, is, it's important to know that and understand that, amen? To have that solidified in our life, just to have a general sense of who God is and history and the beginning from the end and purposes of God and, you know, all those wonderful, beautiful things about the Bible. Just foundationally, that's important. It's also important to notice that the Holy Spirit will never contradict Jesus. He will never contradict Jesus, the word of truth. We know this, that this, the Bible says this in John. It says that the Holy Spirit testifies to who Jesus is. And he also he glorifies who Jesus is. And we just read the scripture. It says whatever he hears, he communicates. He will never contradict Jesus. And one of our greatest foundational understandings is if we're hearing properly from the Word of God, if it's contrary to the Word of God, it is not the Holy Spirit. That's one of our that's why it's so important to have foundational stuff in our life, to understand Scripture, to have it permeate our life and our mind. Amen. It's probably pretty understandable. I had recently in the last year or so, I have a friend, his name's Mike, he lives in the UK. And uh, we've known, he used to live in Canada. He'd come to, I've known him for almost 40 years. And he just loves the Lord and has a prophetic gifting. And, and uh, he sent me a message, private message, messenger. I mean, people, messenger, right? He just sent me a prayer. He didn't call me. I didn't see him in person. Hadn't talked to him for a while. He sends me a message. He says, hey, Kaylin, this is Mike here. Hey, I was praying for you, and I feel like the Lord wants to communicate this to you. Now, here I'm telling you. I heard my friend speak to me through word, written words. It wasn't vocal. It was through a message through messenger. God is sending you a message through messenger called the Bible. It's his love letter to you. He's speaking to you. It wasn't something that was written to some guys 2,000 years ago. No, it's written to you. And he speaks through the word of God. And the Holy Spirit Laid it out. Amen? Makes sense? So here's what the Holy Spirit does. This is how he speaks to us when we're reading the Bible. He illuminates the word. He brings life to those black and red things on the page. I've known many people that have read the Bible with no connection to the Holy Spirit. Now, it doesn't mean, that, it doesn't mean God can't use that doesn't mean God can't stir things. doesn't mean God can't bring conviction. I think he'll use that word. It never returns void. But there's something different between just reading it and reading it as a believer with the Holy Spirit inside of you who illuminates it. Pow! Pop! Wow! I didn't know that. The Bible says that the word of God is living and active. It says that in Hebrews chapter 4. It's living and active. It transforms the way that we think. It does something in our heart. It's, it's, right? It transforms us. He reveals things. In other words, he, he turns the light bulb on in our minds. Amen? People, people experience that? Anybody? Yeah, it's like, it's like something just, right? He does that. He gives insights. Depth of insight. Mark kind of communicated that this morning. He says, I was thinking about this week and something, something came to me. Something I noticed, I think is how he worded it. I noticed something about asking of God. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to Mark. Right? He speaks to us. He opens up our minds to understand, to give us revelation. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. Listen to this. However, as it is written... This is an old scripture, Old Testament scripture. It says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. So basically what it's saying is you don't, you don't get it. You'll, you'll never understand it. You'll never really see it. It's, it's impossible for you to, to know what God has planned for you. 
But how many people are glad that God puts words like but in the Bible? But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. So what a privilege to be in the church today. What a privilege it is to have the Holy Spirit residing within us because your eye can see, your mind can perceive, your ear can hear what God has in store for those he loves because we have the spirit who reveals it to us. Amen? He illuminates. He speaks. He, 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 he talks to you. Gives you understanding. It's like this jumping off the page idea. How many people have ever read the scripture and something just jumped off the page? Got your attention. I had never seen that before. Or the Lord is speaking something directly into your life about maybe something that's happening in your life. Anybody have that happen in scripture? I'm here to tell you it's going to start happening this week for you if it hasn't. Now, I'm just gonna give, this just recently happened. I have been, uh, how, how many of you uh, can just kind of make things happen when things aren't quite going right in your life? You know, you, you just, you know, you follow, I'm a pastor of a church, and, you know, I have a family, and I have some spiritual, I got some, I got some experience. You know, I, I, I can't, I've been, we've been doing this for a while. There's some decisions that we can make. And I, I was going through this season of, of me feeling like I just needed to save the day. I'll be the hero. I'll make this happen, right? I'll, I'll just be the guy that'll make these decisions. But I felt like the Lord was just telling me, wait a minute, back off, little buckaroo. <laughs> there was, God was doing something in my heart. This isn't the last couple of months. He's just doing something in my heart. And he says, look, 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 look could you just... Don't make any decisions for a while. Just chill. I like that. Thank you very much, Hayden. That's awesome. Just chill. And so I'm reading through my daily devotions, just my basic daily reading. It's out of Joshua. How many people know the story that Joshua was going in to take the land, and he comes upon these group of people called Gibeonites. And the Gibeonites were supposed to be they were supposed to destroy them and kick them out of the land and take over their property, right? That's what God called them to do in the promised land. And the Gibeonites show up with, they're dressed up, they look like they've been traveling a long way, they had this food that was moldy and dry, and they had holes in their clothes. And they came to Joshua and his crew, and they said, we've been traveling from afar, distant land. We've been traveling for weeks and we just want to make a covenant with you. We want to make a treaty. We want to make a deal that you'll leave us alone and we'll be your partners. And, and it says they looked at them. Everything looked good, sounded good. The bread felt good. And it said this, though, it had one little statement in there. And it says, but they did not inquire of the Lord. Come to find out they were neighbors, but they made a treaty. And I felt like that Scripture, you got that statement, but they did not inquire of the Lord. Pop. And I thought, oh, <laughs> God, I'm not going to make any decisions. God, I want to practice a life that's not going to freak out, make knee jerk reactions, respond to some little thing that happens without me coming to that place where I inquire. Holy Spirit speaking to me. Which is good advice for all of us, by the way. Amen? Amen. The scripture, Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. And he'll use scripture to do it. He'll reveal to you how to speak. You may be in a situation where you don't know what to say or you don't, you don't know what to do. You know what the Bible teaches? Listen to this. Mark 13 says, Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, and there were some difficult times coming for that church, there was persecution. You can read about it in the book of Acts. The people were getting arrested, going to the leaders. They were getting beat and whipped and in trial and getting in trouble all the time. He says, whenever you're arrested or brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given to you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. He wants to speak to us. He wants to speak through us at a moment's notice. A time of difficulty. 
a time where you need maybe have a, a defense or you need to preach the gospel to somebody, amen? But here's the, here's the interesting thing. They were prepared before. That's why prayer and time in the word is important to foundationally put in our life so that we're prepared when we go forward, amen? So the first thing he does is he speaks to us through the word of God. Second way is through our thoughts. This is where it becomes a little bit more subjective. It's not super, super clear. Everybody's a little bit different, but hopefully I can bring a little bit of a illumination to what we're trying to communicate here, amen? That's why I think just even in our prayer times, just praying uh, to the Lord when we're praying that we're just sensitive and discerning of his voice. How many people know that there are different voices? There's the voice of the world that would be culture, that would be ways of thinking that the culture says we should think in a certain way, we should act and behave in a certain way. Those are voices. There's the voice of the devil. He has a voice. He'll lie to you. He'll, he'll try to deceive you. He'll speak, hath God really said. He'll challenge, right? There's our voice. How many people are really good at justifying what you should be doing? You will lie to yourself. Amen. Yeah, you will lie to yourself. Matter of fact, I, the Bible says in Jeremiah, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things. And I've always thought about that. I, says that, that, I think that means he's also more deceitful than the devil. Deceitful above all things. Well, the devil made me do it. Nah, I, don't, I think that's your own evil desires. Right? He obviously plays a role in that. And then there's the voice of God. And so we want to discern. We want to learn to hear the voice of God. It's, a, it's important that we do that. I want to listen to the scripture out of 1 Corinthians 2. It's a little bit lengthy, but I think it's good. Follow along. He says, For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? We're talking about the thoughts of man. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Listen, we have not received the spirit of the world. But the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has truly and freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, expressing spiritual truths with spiritual words. We have a connection with the Holy Spirit that knows our minds and knows our thoughts, who knows God's mind and God's thoughts. There's our connection. The Holy Spirit knows God's mind. He knows our thoughts. He wants to speak to us. Verse 14, the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, but he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. We're a spiritual people with the Word of God, with one another to help one another learn and understand how God thinks and talks. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, there's a discernment. But he does speak through our minds and through our thoughts, through our feelings at time. And I want to just address that. There's an inner sense most often that I think the Lord leads us and speaks to us. It could be something as simple as just a feeling or an unction. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like a, just a, a, an unction. I, I just kind of sense, I feel that we kind of need to do this. I'll give you a perfect example. Bernie and I were traveling down the road one day. And uh, she used to own an assisted living. And we had a, an older gentleman, and I think his name was Harold. And he was in a hospital. And Bernie looked at me and she says, I just feel like we need to go see Harold. It was an unction. It was a feeling. It was a drawing. Now, uh, I said, okay. So we went to the hospital. And he, just to, I was able to lead him to Christ. And he fell asleep and never woke up again. And you want to talk about timing. If Bernie, that was the Holy Spirit speaking. It wasn't an audible voice. I didn't hear it. Well, so we have some guests. I was, <laughs> the Taylors are here from Great Falls. Welcome, by the way. So they were staying at our house last night. And I was talking about this a little bit, about God speaking to us. And, and, and Lloyd informed me that he says, well, his wife informed him that the way that men really listen to the Holy Spirit <laughs> is by what their wives tell them. <laughs> I 
uh, another way is thoughts. A thought might come to you that's not normally you. It's out of the blue. You wouldn't have normally thought that. Just a, a thought or an, an idea, perhaps, that just comes to your mind, oftentimes can be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Uh, I think a conviction. Now, this is a, this is a good one. Don't do that. <laughs> Conviction. Don't do, don't go there. Don't say that. You guys know what I'm talking about. And we do have a conscience. A conscience plays a role, but the Holy Spirit brings conviction. He'll convict us of sin or attitudes, or right? Or he may convict you and say, go fix that. Go handle that. Uh, Lee and I went to For the Blank this week. We, we met with CDLI on the south side which by the way, invited him to come here next month, so he's gonna come share about what they do, but he was just giving a, a testimony. He lives on the south side, and he had a situation happen where the next door neighbors, drug dealers and pit bull dogs, and he's got little kids, got into his yard. He was very concerned, and so he called animal patrol, right? And then he said he left because he didn't want to be there when all the action happened. But the Lord convicted him. He says, I want you to go fix that with your neighbor. So he did. First, he said the neighbor was not happy. But he asked him, why are you telling me this? <laughs> it was an opportunity just to, just to make things right with a neighbor that didn't know the Lord. He said, that's a conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit spoke to him. See, that conviction, go fix that. How about a tugging or an urging or a drawing towards somebody. Maybe it's, maybe it's you're walking down the street, could be a total stranger, but you had eye contact, perhaps. Or, or a drawing to that person, or I feel like I need to talk to that person. Or, anybody ever have that happen, right? Just can that, that's oftentimes the Holy Spirit speaking to us and leading us. And then I think this is really, really important, the peace of God that surpasses understanding. That's oftentimes a very true uh, Default or litmus test, if you want to call that, that God's peace doesn't, the circumstances could be uncomfortable, life could be uncomfortable. I'll tell you that Jed and Kim Johnson in the Ukraine are in an uncomfortable situation, but there was a peace for them to hear from the Lord that says, I want you to stay. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to them. Now, mom and dad are probably on the horn saying, Get out, get out, get out. <laughs> But they're listening to the Holy Spirit who's giving them a peace. That, that's, a, that's a true sense of really hearing the voice of God. Amen? So, so let these things be a part of your, just your understanding as you continue to, to grow in your prayer life with the Lord. He also speaks in visions. Visions would be like, it's actually explained as an act of seeing or an appearance in your, I would like to say like in your mind's eye. I, I think this happens actually quite often for the people of God. They might be ministering or they might be speaking and God will just kind of give them a picture of something, a, a mental picture. Could be even a, a word perhaps or an idea oftentimes of just a, a picture of what, what God maybe, there's been many times that sometimes I just get one word maybe with sharing with somebody or just one word, and, and out of that comes a conversation with the Holy Spirit. So Acts 2.17 says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. So just maybe, maybe a landscape or a picture in your eye. Amen? So that's... In our thoughts, the Holy Spirit will speak through your thoughts and your sense of inner sense, your feeling. He'll lead us that way. That has really nothing to do with an audible voice. Very rarely will that happen. Happen sometimes. I've had it happen a couple of times over my life where I actually heard God say something. Which, by the way, it brings a little bit of fear. So, hope that helps. We're good to go. Let's just talk about the third and last point. Is he speaks through other people. Like your wife. <laughs> At least we know how Lloyd gets his direction from the Holy Spirit. But this is why we need each other. 
This is why the body of Christ, this is why there's many members, that's why there's different gifts, right? That, that's why it's good to pray together and just talk together and, and just bounce things back and forth and say, you know, I really, you know, I felt like the Lord was speaking this to me and what do you, what do you think of that, right? Just having those wonderful conversations helps bring focus and clarification and confirmation that the Holy Spirit speaking to us. The first one I would say is just in godly counsel. You know, if you're making a major decision in your life or you're struggling through things, get somebody that's godly to talk to you about it. You can be a spiritual mentor or spiritual leader, but it says this in Proverbs 15, 22. It says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but, the, but with many advisors, they succeed. So just that idea of getting godly counsel, I think is extremely important, especially if you feel like uh, once again, I think if it's major decisions or major things that God is speaking to you, get input. Amen? If it makes sense to me, if it makes sense to you. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's good. Just checking the pulse here, making sure you guys are still alive. I have, Leah told me 75 minutes today I was going to be done. That's one minute. So I have one minute to finish this. Are you guys ready? And the next one is the gifts of the Spirit, which we talked about last week, really this prophetic idea that God will speak to one another and speak into the lives of others. It could be something as simple as an encouragement, right? Really, what Tim's testimony was an encouragement that God is faithful and he's a miracle-working God and he's a mysterious God, but he loves us, right? That's encouraging. That's really the Holy Spirit speaking through him to us. Scriptures. Some people get up and maybe share a scripture or something will come to their heart that they want to share with, with the body, right? That, that's a Holy Spirit speaking to us. It could be songs, spiritual songs, right? It could be hymns, psalms, right? The Proverbs, the Psalms, right? When we would sing, when that ministry, the Holy Spirit speaks through those. And of course, the prophetic confirming ministries, a word of knowledge or a gift of faith or a word of wisdom or somebody speaking into your life that really comes from the Holy Spirit. Other people speaking into your life. Amen? 1 Peter 4.10 says this, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Catch this. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. Is there not a little bit of seriousness to that? That when we speak, we take that seriously. God, is this you? God, is this something you really have for the heart of that person? I'm just going to close with a story. I just thought of it. I, I think sometimes, you know, I, I think we just need to be aware of God in our life all the time. There's been a few times in my life that I've shared things that were came out of my flesh, that came out of my desire to be funny or facetious or whatever, but God still used it. I'm just going to give you one example because it's kind of funny, but I, I remember years and years ago, I was in Great Falls and there was a man by the name, they called him Duke. Duke was a young man, he was an Air Force guy, and he, uh, he <laughs> you know, he's the Air Force, how many people know the Air Force just owns you? You do what they tell you to do. It's not like you can say, hey, I don't, you know, I don't feel like doing that. No, they own you. They have a stamp of the USAF on the forehead, I think. So he was an Air Force guy, and he was called out every Wednesday to go out into the field, missile silos, right, to go do work, whatever he did out there. And one night, because he really felt called to do youth ministry. And he felt called to the ministry. He felt called to doing this work. He felt called to... And he was in the bathroom, in the men's restroom, <laughs> of all places, in the men's restroom, and I'm in there. And he's doing his thing, and I'm washing my hands and wiping them dry, and he's complaining. Now, I, uh, I'm not much, I don't, not, I don't like to hear complaints too, too much. <laughs> and he's sitting there, and, and uh, he's complaining about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I can't do this, and I can't fulfill the God of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I looked at him, and I said, well, it sounds like God to me. And I walked out. Fast forward about 10 years later. I'm down here pastoring this church, but I went to a men's retreat of Great Falls. And this Duke stands up and he starts talking about, he says, there's a man in this room that's my hero in the faith. It's a true, true story. And I'm looking around and I'm thinking, well, it's gotta be so-and-so. It's gotta be 
Kern Lee, or it's got to be, uh, you know, these guys, just different guys. I thought, well, maybe it's Rob. You know, I, I'm thinking it's all these people. And he's just talking about how it changed his life. And I didn't have that close a relationship with him, especially after that. <laughs> he came up to me afterwards and he said this. He says, you're my hero. He says, do you remember the time? <laughs> Back in the bathroom? He said, God got a hold of him. And God used that statement to deal with his attitude and to deal with his heart. And he says, you set me free. And guess what? God arranged things so that he could do youth ministry and serve the Lord. I'm here to tell you that God will speak in circumstances if you'll listen. And it may not even seem like it's the best circumstance, but he'll speak to you if you'll listen because he cares for you and he loves you. And there's little nuances to serving a big God if we'll just listen and pay attention. Amen? You go ahead and bow your heads. Perhaps you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus. You never become a born again Christian. You're not sure that you would go to heaven tonight if you were to pass away, but you want to know. Would you simply just raise your hand and say, I would like to receive forgiveness from Jesus this morning? Just raise your hand and we will pray with you. You can know that you know that you're going to go to heaven and be with the Lord and really receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. Is there anybody that would like to respond to this this morning? Raise your hand. Perhaps you've given your life to the Lord in the past. Maybe you've made a commitment to Christ, but you've gone your own way. You've done your own thing. Maybe you've, oftentimes it's called backslidden. Maybe you've been backslidden for a period of time. And you'd like to make a recommitment to Christ. Is that you this morning? Would you fit into that category? And we will pray with you as well. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, thank you for residing in our life. Thank you for being ever present in your life. And God, I pray for your people now. God, I pray for us as a body of believers that our ears would be attentive to your voice. God, we understand, Holy Spirit, that you want to speak to us, that we want to pay attention and we want to hear. We want to, we want to set aside those private times with our Father in heaven really our, our prayer closet time, that, that we can commune with our Father. We can commune with you, Lord. And so, Father, I pray that you would stir our hearts. God, let us be praying men and women, and praying men and women that hear the voice of God. And God, we also know this, that the prayers of a righteous man are effective. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful body of believers. Bless them now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. If you have any prayer needs, we got Jody over here to my right, David to my left. Any questions about salvation or next steps, you can come see David and talk to him and he'll pray with you. If you have any needs, uh, come please come, come get some prayer. So thanks guys for being a part of Church for the City. We love you. You have a great week and we will see you next time. Amen.